So, what's your name? My name is Michael Gundale. And I'm Paul Cardole. And you have a new paper out in the Journal of Ecology, right? That's right, uh. yeah. We've submitted a paper uh, under the new series of Sprint reviews, um, named after Janet Sprint, an uh, eminent ecologist who's uh, focused extensively on nitrogen fixation and legumes. So it's an honor, that's a topic interesting to both of us, uh, and it's an honor to have a paper in this series. So tell me a little bit about the content of the manuscript. Oh, um, it was supposed to be uh, a new review paper on plant soil feedbacks, but of course that's a very general topic. And there's been several like, uh, good uh, review papers uh, on plant soil feedbacks in recent years, in the last 10 years, I would say. So then the challenge uh, basically was to, to come up with sort of a, a structure sort of for the paper that would be sort of uh, interesting, uh, to, to make it an interesting read. Um, and also to sort of, because that's what we've been discussing uh, a little bit, how to sort of uh, position the plant uh, soil feedback research field or the field of plant soil feedback research into the, the broader fields of ecology. Because there's been so many developments in, in the whole sort of field of ecology that are relevant one way or another to the field of plant soil feedback research, but that, has, that have not always been considered in the, in the plant soil feedback research uh, fields. Yeah, so Paul and I uh, brainstormed about what were important aspects to consider, and we came up with a list uh, of topics and eventually we condensed that list down to four key dimensions and that included time or succession, space, environmental context, and biological resolution. So those are the four major dimensions we decided to focus on. So tell me a little bit about your backgrounds in plant soil feedbacks. How do you come to this, you know, topic? Yeah, that, that goes back to uh, well, to the to the days that I was doing my PhD uh, research. I did my PhD uh, at the Netherlands Institute of Ecology with uh, Wim van der Putten as my main supervisor, and I think uh, many of you would know um, Wim van der Putten. He's one of the sort of the, the founding members of this field of research. So, even though my project was not really supposed to be on plants or feedbacks per se, uh, I did get interested, of course, in the topic. So that's why uh, when I started working on plants or feedbacks. That was mostly in the context of uh, ecosystem restoration or secondary succession. Um, and then later on, I sort of over the, over the years, I've always been working uh, uh, within this field of research, not necessarily always exactly on plant soil feedbacks, but always on plant soil biota interactions uh, in different kinds of contexts, different kinds of systems, different kinds of uh, um, um, Soil organisms also to be, uh, that were involved in that. So on and off, I've always been uh, yeah, kept interested in this field. And I became first interested as a PhD student at the University of Montana in the U.S. And uh, there were some very influential people on me there, uh, just to name a few: Tom DeLuca, Ray Calloway, Anna Sala, Matthias Rillig, at the time. Um, and it was a great environment to study plants and soils and their interactions. And there was also a big focus in Montana in invasion ecology. So I was really attracted to the, the questions of uh, what controls invasions, why are invasive species successful, and how plant soil feedbacks could contribute to that. So that was sort of my start, start into the field. And at the time, I remember reading all these great papers coming out of the VIM uh, Wim van der Putten lab uh, in the Netherlands, including papers by Paul. So uh, outstanding that we eventually could become colleagues together uh, in Sweden. So what do you hope comes out of this? What research do you want to see, you know, inspired by this paper? I, I think uh, we both uh, got the impression after reviewing the literature for this paper that there are a lot of uh, idiosyncratic results across papers in, in different contexts and um, I think we both came to the conclusion that crossing more of these dimensions will help us lead to, to generalizations um, in the future where things won't look so idiosyncratic. We'll see what those general patterns are more clearly if we can 
uh, incorporate more dimensions into single studies and apply similar approaches across different study systems. So one of the major lessons of this paper, for me at least, is that plant soil feedbacks are really variable. They vary across space, time, environmental context, biological context. So if they're so variable, then why should we care? Why aren't they just chalked up as noise? Now I, I can say something. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> this, uh, again, I'm not sure if that we answered this, this, this question, but mm. but there's a lot of really important applications of plant soil feedback research. Because even if you look up all our uh, older review papers on plant soil feedback research, it goes back like centuries or millennia in time, going back to the, the old days of uh, agricultural crop rotation, and still even today. Um, also, uh, with new developments, uh, methodological developments and mm -hmm. crop breeding developments, uh, plant soil feedback research is really important just to, for example, to select uh, the best varieties, um, more productive or better able to, to, to cope with climatic changes, for example. I, I, I think also um, we're, we're at an early stage in this field, so we're we are at the point where we're getting studies from different locations and patterns are starting to emerge. So what might look like noise is maybe not noise. We're, we're starting to see patterns and some patterns are becoming more clear. Like our strategists seem to be more negatively impacted by negative, negative feedbacks, um, um, for, for example, or negative feedbacks tend to be more uh, prevalent in higher fertility um, uh, environments, you know, so these types of patterns are becoming more clear, but we, I think a major point of the paper is crossing more dimensions gives us more context to actually understand those generalities in the future. So this paper has some very beautiful figures. How did you go about designing those and which ones are your favorites? Um. No, I, I, I want to say maybe something about uh, about figure figure one, because mm. once we finally sort of figured out sort of uh, what's the main sort of uh, structure of this paper, with these different dimensions or the different fields of research that have influenced uh, the field of plant soil feedback research, um, we thought about sort of how to illustrate this, because nowadays things are developing so fast, and yeah, what I said before that there's so many papers even published the field is just exploding uh, in a way so so that that's so we thought how to sort of illustrate sort of the acceleration of this field of research and then i don't know how i came to the idea of a bullet train so that sort of goes mm. really 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 fast um but then sort of then we thought about sort of a contrast actually so what was sort of but it's not so fast, mm. which would then we ended up with the, with the horse and the, and the belly. <laughs> so, <laughs> and the cobblestone street, yeah. And the cobblestone street, yeah. rather than sort of the high-speed uh, speed, yeah. uh, speed, uh, train track. Mm. Um, so I don't know yeah. what you want to say about that. Uh, yeah. Apparently not all people were yeah. in initially sort of uh, impressed yeah. by that figure. Yeah. We, we had to clarify by the um, horse and buggy that we meant seminal papers in the field, not old fashioned <laughs> research. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I can comment on figure four, uh, which I sort of led um, with the environmental context section. Um, there, I, I, I struggled to, to depict because I wanted to show both um, spatial and temporal variation in abiotic and biotic properties, which was a lot to take on in one figure. So uh, eventually I realized I needed two axes, so that's how we got the V. And so the left hand side is the spatial variation or, or sort of landscape gradients. And on the right hand side is environmental change, uh, mainly focused on CO2. And then um, what we, we, the, there were many versions of the figure that evolved uh, as Paul and I kind of discussed <laughs> um, them together. And uh, so, so there was a lot of nuance built in some of the earlier versions that now is hopefully well explained, but try to show how the community or the biomass changes and how plant soil feedbacks can, can feed into those, those patterns that we see on the landscape. 
What advice would you have for people who are just starting off on uh, collaborating on a review paper? Uh, take, take, take your time. Yeah. <laughs> These are not things that you write, at least, well, maybe some people do, but uh, I don't or we don't, at least. It's not something that you write overnight or in a week or a month or a month or two. Um, of course, the, the writing itself takes time because I don't know how many um, citations we added to this paper, uh, a lot, and we could have easily cited like 200 more uh, relevant papers. Um, so it's a lot of reading involved as well um, before you actually yeah, really start writing. But uh, we'll also just uh, take time to, to, to think about it. Yeah, it's because these things need to develop sort of uh, over time. Sometimes you, you work on it and then you leave it for a little bit and then to pick it up later because then you look at this with fresh eyes and, uh, and you so it's, yeah, yeah, so it, it, devel it develops. It's like a sort of development yeah. Uh, yeah, from an from initial idea to something that mm -hmm. takes shape. And I think uh, Paul and I took uh, the right amount of time at the beginning to settle in on a, on a good outline. So without a good outline, if you start writing too soon without a good structure, then uh, you waste a lot of time. So we, I think we, we did a um, fine job together mm -hmm. discussing how to organize the paper. And uh, from my perspective, this was one of the more efficient, um, fun review type papers to, uh, to um, collaborate on because we did have a very efficient structure from the beginning. So my recommendation would be to really um, plan the structure uh, very well from the beginning. Uh, okay, I think we're done. Um, yeah. Yes, <laughs> and uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, we hope that you read and enjoy the paper, and we look forward to questions on Twitter afterwards. Yeah, which will be soon. Thank you. Thank you. Ha <laughs> ha.